It's Monday, December 6th, coming up live on The View. The red, white, and view is welcoming a trailblazer for women in D.C. Former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice is our special guest co-host weighing in on hot topics. From whether the people behind WikiLeaks are high-tech terrorists, to Sarah Palin and Kate Goslin's camping disaster, and Chelsea Handler's wild X-rated rant against Angelina Jolie. Then, Kira Sedgwick's telling you how she's giving fans of her hit show The Closer an early Christmas gift. And if this empty nester is counting the minutes until her kids come home for the holidays. And the plastic surgeon putting brides-to-be under the knife on the reality hit Bridal Plasty is answering critics who say he's crossing the line by performing plastic surgery for a game show. All that, hot topics and more, coming up live on The View. As you can see, we have a very special guest co-host today. The Red, White, and View is honored to be sitting with a pioneer for women in politics, former Secretary of State, the fabulous Condoleezza yes. Rice. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Can, I, can I show you about? And by the way, you're looking for some really good reading. This is Condoleezza's mm -hmm. story, and it's a really wonderful one. I read it. I thought you might dig it. So just, we'll talk more about it later. But you had one of the highest pressure gigs, jo pardon me, jobs, 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 in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot where I was. Uh, take us into the life of U.S. Secretary of State. Well, Secretary of State's the best job in government. You get to go represent this great country that I love so much. Uh, you get off a plane that says the United States of America, and it's a great moment, except that you have to worry that maybe you're going to say that you're in a country that you're actually not in because you've been traveling so much and you're just not <laughs> Not sure where you are at any given time. So it's always a, a jet lagged job, but it is a marvelous opportunity. How, how I loved did, it. When you would go to other countries <laughs> yeah. where it's not as progressive for women, how did they treat you? Or did you have to, you know, force them to say, I am a woman, you will treat me with respect? You, know, you have it? very few problems because nobody wants to make the United States Secretary of State angry. Okay. And so they That's find a, a way to treat you very well. And indeed, sometimes you get those little moments. Uh, you go to a place, and I would meet with these very, very conservative religious leaders. And one day I was meeting with this very conservative man who couldn't even shake my hand because really? I was a woman. Yeah. And at the end of it, he said, uh, would you wait right here? I'd like you to meet my 13-year-old granddaughter. And out <laughs> came this little girl, covered Muslim dress, and she said, I want to be foreign minister too. Oh, wow. And her grandfather wow. just beamed. And I thought mm -hmm. at that moment, maybe there's some hope because this very prejudiced yes. man sees a better future for his granddaughter. Wow. So and he great may have like to shake her hand. And he may have That's to right. shake her hand. What did you do on your first day, technically off from, from that job? What was that like? I mean, you wake up and you're, you don't have to be anywhere. You could be any, anywhere you wanted That's to be. That's right. I, I slept for a long time. <laughs> and, again. and then I opened the newspaper and I realized that I could look at the newspaper and I could say, isn't that interesting? And then I could go on and read whatever I wanted to because I didn't have to do anything about what was in it. Oh, so uh, nice. that was a great moment. Well, you know, I have a question for you. Uh, I'm invited to the White House Christmas party oh, this Friday. Great. I'm very excited. Yeah, I've very never been before. Yeah. And I, I was wondering if you could tell me what I'm supposed to, like, know. Well, first of all, remember that the White House yeah. is the people's house. And any president will tell you that they are just there as temporary occupants to mm -hmm. try and represent us as best that they can. Right. And uh, it's actually small, the White House, yeah. and not very formal okay. in uh, when you look at, say, Buckingham Palace or some right. of the great places around the world. And so go and be relaxed and be yourself well, and enjoy a, yourself. What about uh, high heels? Because I, I'm afraid to you walk. Know what? Let me tell you something. <laughs> Having just, yeah. you know... Carry your heels, get one of those right. flat things, unless it's snowing. Wear your boots. Do not, because it's a, ve it's a lot of security oh, to right. go through these days. Through. And, if you, and if you're in heels, that <laughs> I learned, yeah. because those crazy people crashed and then the security went out of, this, oh, out of yeah, the world. Yeah. So uh, 
wear flats or boots and carry, and, my and shoes. And carry your shoes. Well, put That's those it. heels on because you do not want yeah. a picture without your fabulous That's heels on. Yeah. You put your heels on as soon as you get them on. We were talking about okay. reading. Be patient. The lines can be a little long. Be patient. Yeah. Be patient. Yeah. I don't care. I've never done it before. I, just, I'm so yeah. I have to thank fine. you too because when the last time I was there, Condoleezza and I actually, as Secretary of the State, of State, we actually sat together and you, as comfortable as you made it sound for joy, you made it really comfortable that day for. Tim and I to be there, and it was, you, you I love your way. Well, You're thanks. just thanks. an incredible woman. Well, it's a so. great experience. I'm really glad for you, Joy. Yeah, you'll dig it. You'll yeah. dig it. But now, here's something you haven't had to deal with necessarily, except as an American citizen, but WikiLeaks founder, Julian yeah. Assange, has threatened to release what he calls a doomsday mm. file of classified information on everything from Guantanamo Bay to Afghanistan, wow. if any government tries to curtail mm. his activities. Now... That, to me, sort of sounds uh, like a terrorist, because yeah. like, that's what cyber terrorists cyber seem right. to do. They right. are, try to hold countries hostage in fear. Mm, right. Am I crazy or just being no, nutty? No, this is a really serious matter. And uh, whatever you label it, it's wrong. And it ought to be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't prosecute it, if somebody isn't punished for what he's doing, mm -hmm. then More. people are going to keep doing it. Uh, you can't possibly protect yourself completely in the day of the Internet and the way that the right. Internet works. But this is a great disservice, not just to the United States, but as uh, Secretary Clinton said, to the whole international community. Right. You cannot conduct business this way. And a lot of the stuff, why can't he find something useful, like where is Osama bin Laden? Right. That would be helpful. <laughs> if he's got all those documents, you would think that he would have find, something. Find him, well, and then we'll discuss... But are they being decisive, well. the White House, about, you know, he, they're, they're con are they going to consider him a terrorist? Well, they are having the Justice Department look into what laws uh, are mm -hmm. applicable here, and that's really, I think, what the White House has to do. I hope they hurry up. Because the longer this goes on, uh, the more the United States looks like a kind of paper tiger. And frankly, people aren't going to talk to us if they think that what they said is going to be on the front page of uh, right. every newspaper yeah. in the world. Yeah. Now, that said, reading some of this, I also thought, you know, people talk too much in these cables. You know, <laughs> you don't have to write down everything that you think. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, so probably some restraint in what you actually write down would be helpful to it. Really? Maybe is people that, have learned don't that. Don't put it in writing. is like... Everybody knows but this, that. But doesn't it cut down on something that could actually be history? You can't even journal your thoughts, anything. I mean, I think that's also w a shame that what he's doing. Well, well that's, that's, like a that's, ransom. that's true. Um, my good friend George Schultz, former Secretary of State, has a piece today um, on uh, the Daily Beast, and he talks about the fact that he kept a very, very careful journal of everything. He had somebody mm -hmm. writing down everything they did. Nobody would think of doing that now. No, I didn't right. even keep a journal. I didn't, didn't even, I did not. You just committed. Specifically for the reason of protecting well, uh, information? Well, part of it was that I didn't really want to, uh, to have something like that lying around. But it's also that, frankly, after working all day, the last thing I wanted to do was go home and think about what I'd done it. all day. Yeah, so. right. Let me ask you this, because I know it happens in my life all the time, where you're in negotiations with something, and you turn to your assistant or somebody and say, the guy's a bonehead, you know, if he, mm -hmm. you know, I wish he, you know, would get hit by a pie tomorrow morning. Are the things, oftentimes, if you're in the midst of talking about st folks, aren't these your opinions that this, that, that these people have written down about how they feel about uh, Putin or how they feel yeah, about right, whoever? Right. And their opinions, they may or may not reflect the reality, their mm -hmm. opinions, their perceptions. Uh, again, I think probably a few too many per opinions and perceptions, but people have to feel free to write a cable back so that the secretary or the deputy secretary knows how they view the situation. Right. The good thing is our diplomats come across as very serious people who know the places that they right. are uh, representing right. us in. But this just shouldn't happen. It's going to keep happening. They've got to find a way to stop it. They've uh, got to the, crack down. They've really got to crack down anybody, on it. Could this, because uh, I think Newt Gingrich yeah. said, you know, this is a reflection of how poorly run the Obama administration is. Is I mean, did he, I mean, I, I don't understand. Is I mean, is it, is <laughs> it, it, is it, it, is it the president's fault? This right. could have happened to anybody. Or it could have happened to anybody. Um, I do think the, and I hope the administration is about mm. to really push the envelope here and what can be done to stop right. it. And I saw that we have, I, we have to do it legally. And we have to do it because 
we are a country of laws. We have to do yeah, it legally. Yeah, all right. But uh, needs to stop. And it could have happened to anybody, not yeah. just to the Obama administration. It could have happened to us. Well, he wants to run for president next year, so that's what that's about. <laughs> would you ever, would you ever well. consider running? No. I didn't even run for, for school <laughs> government when I was a kid. <laughs> well, you know oh. what? Speaking of running, we're going to run. Because that's what we do. But we're going to come right back because, hey, we have more hot topics than anybody you're going to see today. We'll be right back. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston apparently is a good friend of talk show host uh, Chelsea Handler, who didn't hold back her feelings about Angelina Jolie, the current partner of Jennifer's ex-husband, Brad Pitt. Yikes. Take a look. <laughs> She's a homewrecker. She is. And so are you. You're a homewrecker, too. She's the kind of girl that you look at, and, like, she can rescue as many babies from as many countries as she wants to. I don't believe you because when I look into a woman's eyes and, and she gets interviews and she goes, I don't have a lot of female friends. That's why. That's why. If you're a female and you don't have female friends, then you're a bitch. <laughs> you know, it's really interesting for, for me, the way I feel. It's, it's very interesting because uh, Jennifer Aniston has been very, you know, diplomatic about her feelings. <laughs> You know, she's got this image of being a good girl. So there's things that, and any any woman that has had uh, been in uh, an, an affair, infidelity, there's things you want to say that Jennifer Aniston has not been able to say. That's why you got good girlfriends. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's why you got your girlfriends. Because apparently, because then you. Chelsea's doing a stand-up act. So, you know, so that's what stand-up comics should, some people why do. Why should stand-up acts be on television or on YouTube? We put it on television. Know, you know what? It didn't somebody, used to be that way. It yeah, used to be with their that phone. the Friars Club and stand-up was, was your, your privacy. Yeah, it used to and be that. But it's, it's, not, that, it's not that way any longer. Yeah, now me. you got to deal Talk with the fact that... Talk WikiLeak. Yeah, I mean, but now you're on stage. You have to deal with the fact that people always have cell phones and they always will be recording you. But apparently, there's some, there's still maybe some hurt feelings because they just got done vacationing together in Cabo. Who did? Uh, Chelsea and Jennifer Aniston. And apparently, maybe there's still some hurt feelings that came out because normally, when somebody hurts your friend, yeah. you you uh, yeah, feel you're hurt for them. You advocate. This. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's a still... little. You know what? I'm sorry. I, I, I appreciate what you're saying, Sherry. Mm -hmm. But she's a little late with this. You know, they've been married quite a, a right. while now, and to sort of kick it all up again seems a little uh, disingenuous. Now, now I, yeah. you know, I, I don't know what happened in the Aniston Pitt marriage. I don't know. Maybe she didn't want to, maybe he didn't want to, I don't know. But I, what we know is what we see on magazines. And to me, that's not a good enough reason. But, you know, she was doing her show, and it wasn't, yeah, she wasn't doing on show. her television show. Right, right. So that makes it, you know, but that's what it's I'm a lot more fun you, that way. Maybe, it, maybe some of the hurt has not gone down yeah, because when not, they're together, it's not, not her that it way, surfaced that's again. That's not her thing to, to it's really not her right. thing yes. to do. Would it change yeah. what you did, though? Yes. Like, if you're saying, oh, now people have cameras, yes, would it change as your act? Would you alter what you said? Listen, man, there is a sign outside of my show because. When you come to see my show, it's for that night. It's not for you to take home. If I wanted to do a take home show, I'd work for HBO. Right. But, but people what now, I, they, they can but hide you know what? Whoopi. Well, you, you don't know what? Know You're not allowed in with a cell phone oh, in you, my you show. Oh, you take them. It's, That's yeah. the only thing it's, you can do, it's, because it's the, the, the whole thing of stand-up is freedom. You're right. supposed to be right. free to just yeah. really splurge and it out. to have someone edit, yeah. you know, what the, what the context is. So, you know... I, I hope she had a good turnout for her show because she's a funny broad, mm -hmm. yeah. you she know. Is. And we're going to say, listen, a married woman wrote an op-ed piece in the New York Times about how she finds herself jealous of her friends who are divorcing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She said to her, she said to her husband, they went. I'm not putting it, right? those two stories together, yeah. but I'm just saying. Yeah. There's no yeah. kid Julie yeah. involved in there, but they went out on this date, and she said, you know, I th really think that we should act more divorced. 
You know, I don't you know. Should... I think anybody envying a single mom raising a child, it's nothing to be envious yeah. about. Yeah. It I is. I, you know, for me, I, I, but she said, well, she envies people who are divorced. So I'm, I'm going to, if you, and I'm going to take it to me, uh, you know, because in her article, she said, you know, I envy women because mothers are able to re refine, uh, reclaim their independence and do and have their freedom. Uh, if you're a single mom, it ain't nothing to envy. But it you should really be able not. to do it that is... within a marriage, but yeah, it's not you know, as easy. Always, maybe it looks greener on the other side. It's like, it's like uh, people envy. Being a guy envying a woman because she can give birth. They forget about the pain involved. Yeah. And it's kind of a similar thing, you know, Maybe. with right. uh, divorce. It's I very think. painful. And that's the problem. Everybody wants what they don't have. But sure. it was right. worth it's it, I'll uh, say that. I mean, look, really but there are also probably plenty of moms out there who would be like, go ahead, it's his turn with the kids this weekend. Likewise, I'm sure some guys would right. say it about the women. I do think there is that serious side mm -hmm. to it. But when you think about acting again like an independent person, you talk to a lot of people on marriage, I'm sure you sort of feel that loss of independence. And maybe yeah, that's yeah. what they think you divorce do. brings again. Well, I don't know. Does. I mean, having been divorced, I can tell you that it, it changes your life. It, I don't think I would even be sitting here if I, if I stayed married, frankly. But that's well, just you, me. And, you know, and for, for me as well, divorce, because I was divorced and I came out here. And I've always, my husband did everything. Checked the tires. He did. And so when I came out here, I remember just the act of putting together a high chair for my son was monumental for me. Because right. I'd never that's done it. Right, my husband, right. I mean, he wanted to do everything and I let him. And right. so it did. I got an independence. I can do stuff on my own. I found that out. I love it. But then there's the end of the day when I go through that mo that that mom guilt. If I can, now I got to go out and I have to make a living for my son, and I have that guilt of going. Gosh, I wish his father was there to help me out. Well, yeah. Sandy, you're single, so you're as free as a bird. I'm listening yeah. to this, yeah. Sandy, I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me too. I think, I think the question that I get most asked about my personal life is, why did you never get married? Uh -huh. And uh, I don't talk about independence or I wanted a career of any of those things. I say I never found anybody I actually wanted to live with. You know, you don't <laughs> you don't get married That's in it. the abstract. You get married to well, somebody. Some, yeah, right. some people and get it, married in the abstract. <laughs> 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 Some people don't. You like the party. It's, it's, <laughs> my, my marriage life was more like a Picasso painting. <laughs> what is that? It's just like crazy. A little weird. <laughs> it's just a little strange. A lot of things coming together to create beauty. Huh? A lot of little things coming together to create beauty. No. No, no, that was okay, a... Don't pretty it up. If, if, it works, if it works and you find yeah. the right person, I don't think there's anything better, probably, but than you know marriage. It, but if you don't, if you then don't, you don't. It's yeah. interesting. Picasso, but you'd rather have that in a way than a Hallmark card. You know, one of those pictures where everything is perfect. Because right. it's not. Well, you said do you me, though, Sherry. not having kids. That's what I would say. So the marriage... Well, I, I always, I'm a kind of conservative girl, so I had to get married before I was going to have kids, and okay. I didn't get married, so I didn't have kids. What and, about George uh, Bush? He was kind of a uh, kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think so, George. <laughs> Joy, you know? he, he, Joy, he was your president. Remember that. No. no, look. In fact, I don't. I don't regret that I didn't have kids because I believe life worked out the way that it should. Yeah. And I have a lot of really great family and extended family, not very big, but very, very close. And the truth of the matter is there are a lot of personal situations that work out for individuals, and that's yes. what we have to remember. Nobody's I judging like anybody's uh, right. choices that's here. Right. Do no. Do, do be you. Do you Go be so you. Much. But be <laughs> you quick yes, sir, and then come back because we're still going to be here. <laughs>
That's hysterical. You can tough it out. It's amazing because you think eight kids, you could do anything, right? If you could take care of them, but it's, it's that it's cold, cold, man. <laughs> no. If it's cold, you can't do nothing. Yeah. If and your shoes are too tight or if it's too cold, that's right. you can't you know you can do anything. I talked to a Marine and he said it's the cold that gets people. It's the cold that's is the right. defining yeah. line between that's those right. that survive and those that's that don't. Right. And it's, it's, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's like she, Kate Gosselin has never been in the wild. She doesn't shoot moose and bears. She doesn't climb mountains. She's got eight kids. She takes them to the supermarket <laughs> and back into school. Why would she even? I might have been able to handle the cold, but the bear. Yeah, I would have been bear. on the next so slip. You don't have to You don't have to worry about the bear. Well, yeah, she's got a good know. shot, too. I've been watching. <laughs> she look, but she looked like she didn't want to be taking care of Kate and her eight kids with her gun. No, she didn't wanted she her look to like step that? it up. She wanted her to step it up. <laughs> yes. Well, you Give know, break. I'm just going to leave that alone. <laughs> Recently, NBA star LeBron James returned to the court in Cleveland after leaving to play for the Miami Heat. And the fans he left behind are no longer fans. Some even held up signs saying, Akron hates you. He's from Akron. You know, now, come on. How long are they going to hold a kind of grudge really? like this? You know, this? Whoopi, uh, we got to remember, I'm not saying they should hold a grudge. Oh, wow, La Bum. That's they wild. Angry. But they this, was, this was the very first time that LeBron has come back to play yeah. in Cleveland. Uh -huh. So I think, you know, if it was, it, it, they wanted to let him know. They had to make sure they, that LeBron knew. You if you didn't see the news. You know before he, he went knew. back that saying, with all the burnings back, of the cars and people going crazy, well, you think he, he didn't have an idea? back in 2013 and they're still holding up those signs. But I think the, a, a bigger part is the fact that you would say to somebody, I hate you for being, resp for trying to make a better life for yourself and your family. They need to let it go already. Let it go. Look, look, look. It's, it's over the top, all right? It's over the top. But are any of you real sports fans? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But you yes. are. I, yeah. I really yes. am. Yes. I really am. Do you you know, I, I have a slightly different view. They shouldn't have said they hate him. However, <laughs> I have held a grudge against the man who fired Paul Brown from the Cleveland Browns since I was nine years old. <laughs> wow. And I still hold the grudge. And why don't so, you let it go? Because if you're a true sports fan, you're really hurt in your inner soul that this person left your team. Well, that's what that. happened I in, in I, Brooklyn I, I, when the Dodgers right. left. People just like, yeah, yeah. see, yeah. 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 But, the, but, well, it's, a, yeah, it's a whole team, the but it's still, the you know, it's still a, a huge thing it's because you've rooted for them, you you've right. sat in the rain, your hair went go, home, yeah. you, everything, you've done everything, but how and much here they he turn around you? and leave you. Say what? I, I was just saying, how much did he get? He gave seven years to them. But not a them. championship. But not a championship, but, but he's got to think about his yes, kids. but, you know, here's the thing. No one person should be responsible for, for getting anybody a championship. If it's not the team, if the team can't That's do true. it, right. if the team now, can't do when it, they couldn't support him. The well, team. you know, uh, look, I, I love I love yeah. LeBron as yeah. a player. Yeah. But I fully understand. Yeah. I wouldn't say I hate <laughs> no, him. No, I wouldn't no, if I were a Cleveland fan. That. I think that's you a, understand. You understand. But I do understand <laughs> how right fans feel when a player leaves who really was, let's face it, he really was the team. Yeah, but you know what? Yeah. But what good is it? What good is a team if the team can't get it done? You I mean, never... what happens if Le I'm sorry, baby, mm -hmm. if LeBron got a cold and couldn't play? Right. Wow. He went to the hospital with pneumonia. Okay, then would they left? Yeah, one word, ahead, two girl. words. Yes, please. Okay, Kobe, yes. Los Angeles. Yeah, but he was made Mike, a deal. Michael, he refuse. Michael, Dr. Michael, Rice. Chicago. Oh, okay. Right. All right. When you say yeah. Kobe, I don't even have to say his last name, and but you Dr. know Los Rice. Angeles. I can say they gave Kobe Bryant a like deal share. that was great for him and, and his family and to I, last him I, for I, the they rest they of the day. But also remember that Kobe also has people who can play on that team, and they work well as a unit. And Michael, as magical as he was, if the Bulls weren't up to speed, he was up there behind. Kevin Garnett left the Minnesota Timberwolves. Never got. I'm a ring, one yeah, ring. To, to play oh, with myself. What, what is that? Oh, and now a word from our sponsor. Indeed. Yes. <laughs> there are many parents who work behind the scenes here at The View, and on occasion, they like to bring their children to the studio to help out. Our View kids have walked the catwalk wearing the hottest looks in school fashions. Some have demonstrated how to work the coolest toys and model the cutest costumes. Some have even shown off their musical talents. And some, well, they just came here to look cute. <laughs> Chris, <you're That's> crazy. <laughs> but, when, but you know when kids get together, besides sharing all their toys, they also share germs, which could lead to fevers, aches, and pains. And there's nothing worse than when your kid gets sick. 
The medicine in children's Advil is the number one pain reliever re recommended by pediatricians. And with the start of the cold and flu season, parents may want to have children's Advil handy. To help parents and kids shake off the winter blues, the makers of Children's Advil are launching the Relieve My Fever contest where parents and kids can have a chance to win $15,000 by singing the Children's Advil rendition of the iconic song, Fever. For more information, just visit our website. And guess what? Thanks to Children's Advil, members of our studio audience are going home with the Relieve My Fever gift bag today. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> around some little kids over the weekend yeah. who were coughing, 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 and I forgot that they're little Petri dishes. Yes. Yeah. They had, they were coughing, coughing. Now the, I woke up this morning, I couldn't breathe. I was like, I'm gonna get those kids. <laughs> we will be right back with the magnificent Kira Sedgwick. for fans of cable TV's most popular show because she's back as the closer, finding out business and pleasure can make strange bedfellows. That's Take a, a look. If you really, honestly, truthfully interested in spending more free time with me... I am. Now, I listen, really listen, am. Listen, listen, that was the whole a second. Point listen, of... listen. Shh. As a liaison to the LAPD, I could pass on some highly classified info to you. Mm-hmm. But you'd have to get back in bed with me for five minutes in order to hear it. Five minutes? Well, this clearly isn't going to be about me. Oh! Please welcome back Kira Sedgwick! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, we have to say to you, congratulations. You have not been here on this couch since you won your Emmy in August. Congratulations. Thank you. you you were nominated five times, yeah. five, five, five times, yeah. and you finally won. How yeah. was it when you won? It was a total shock. I mean, yeah. it, I never expected to win. I, after uh, so many years, I just thought it would never happen, and uh, I spec definitely didn't expect to win this year. Who'd you expect to win? Can you? Would you say Jules, you Julianna Jules Marley, who I love, you know, who's a friend and yeah, you know who's yeah. amazing, and um, and the a good wife. Yeah, right. and the good wife, right? So it was a huge surprise, and um, you know, I didn't. I had a speech, but I didn't know my lines. <laughs> Everyone else who had been up there prior <laughs> just said their you know thing and didn't take out a piece of paper. So I took out a piece of paper. Had to put on my glasses, which were like bad glasses, <laughs> and it was just kind of mortifying. But at least I got to say everything I wanted to say. Oh. So it was wonderful. We're it was so, so nice. Thank you. Thank you. I'm such a huge fan of yours. I love the closer. Just love it. And uh, so it was kind of a blur when it happened, though, huh? walking up on stage. Yeah. And... I mean, well, there's that moment where they say your name and you go, "Oh, great." <laughs> YouTube moment, girl. Sorry. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> okay. um, and uh, and that's why we love you. But it's true. It's that moment of like, oh no, now I have to perform, you yes. know? Because you do. And of course, everyone's going, is the speech going to be good? Is it going to be good? Is it going to yeah. be good? You know? I, mean, I have to ask you too, because I know the last time you were here, we talked a little bit about anticipating empty nest syndrome. Yeah. And your son's been away. And then Sosie just left, yeah. right, for college yeah. in September. So yeah. how is that going? Mama. Um, thanks, Mama. Um, <laughs> you know, it's going okay. Um, it's a process. Yeah. Um, I've had a couple of really bad days, um, yeah. but I've had a couple of really great days. So, you know, I think it's like absolutely the nature of things, but it is your favorite job that you think you're pretty good at mm -hmm. and you get fired. To a certain extent, you really do. Yeah. Um, and it's weird. So, but it's okay, you know. Um, do you text, is it like easier because you can text a little bit? Do I they text, respond? I text, but I, I really that. try not to text too much. I don't want to be the irritating texting mom. Right. I mean, yeah. like every day I would love to know what's going on. But, you know, I don't want to be that irritating. So you, I wait. You know, one of your co-stars <laughs> joked. It's a joke. Yeah. She said, oh, he, he, it's a guy, okay? GW I don't know. you actually said Oh, is that who it was? <laughs> he said that you're a cross between Mary Poppins and Cruella DeVille. <laughs> <laughs> said, if 
you show up on time and know your lines, she's all sugar and spice. If you're late and haven't done your homework, mm. she'll skin you and make a coat out of you. <laughs> Is that an accurate description? Mm. Kind of. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I really love everybody, but it's frustrating when, you know, they don't do their work and, mm. you know, they can and they can be amazing. And, and um, so I can get a little cranky. I don't blame you. Yeah. I mean, it takes time to do these things. Yeah, hours right. Exactly. Hours. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like G Dub? Yeah. But but yeah. Absolutely, G Dub. That's yeah. really G Dub. Yeah. Who he's talking yeah. about, yes. by the way. Now, have I they have ever caught you with your pants down? Have you ever? Are you always prepared? And uh, oh, oh, I thought you meant literally with my pants down. Oh, no. <laughs> Which they have, by the way, actually. Oh yeah. yeah. One time, you know, I have to wear this really unsexy thing where you know they have these little sound packs. You think they would get better, but they don't. And so I have these little shorts where I put the sound pack. Okay. And they're really uncomfortable, and you can't really cross your legs because yeah. the sound pack is right here. And um, one day, my costumer came up to me and said, we don't need your sound pack anymore. And I went, oh, great. And I was wearing this little flouncy skirt, and I pulled down my sound <laughs> pack, and everything came down. <laughs> and my little underwear, my little hanky-pankies. And... Um, <laughs> And, and I looked up, and all, every, all the guys were like, uh. <laughs> and then I said, oh, they didn't see anything. Come on, what color was my underwear? And they go, turquoise. <laughs> In unison, turquoise. <laughs> you know, Akira, the clothes are, we're such big fans of it. It is such a hit. So you're ending your sixth, uh, your sixth season right. uh, by airing five episodes right. starting tonight. Right. So can you tell us what can we expect in uh, the coming episodes? Well, we kind of call these, like, five December episodes for the fans, you know, mm -hmm. because we mo mo mostly do our summer episodes. Um, the last five episodes, um, there's some really dark ones. There's some fun ones, too. The deal is, um, Brenda's still dealing with her chief. You know, she lost the chief job, which she yeah. didn't really want. Right. Um, and now she's up to possibly take Pope's job, who's J.K. Simmons, right. who she loves. And she doesn't want that job either. Right. So there's some, you know, conflict about that. In this first episode that airs tonight, one of my guys gets ambushed. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the mother lion comes out in Brenda and she kicks him but I won't say the other one since I already blew it. That's with the, all right. With the S word. We love it when you come up with the S words oh and the buzz words. Congratulations on the thank Emmy. You. Text your child and tell him we all love him. Thank you. And thank you so much to Kira Sedgwick. Kira Sedgwick. The Closer you. airs five new episodes beginning tonight on TMT. Check your local listings for time. When we come back, the plastic surgeon for the new reality show, Bridalplasty, is answering critics who say he is crossing the line. It's kind of one of the things where, like, if you're having a dream wedding, then obviously you're going to want a dream body. I definitely wouldn't mind some plastic surgery. Tummy tuck, arm tuck, you know, thigh tuck, especially where I have, like, extra skin for my weight loss. Honey, I'm trying to get us a free wedding, okay? Fabulous, over-the-top Hollywood glam-style wedding with some plastic surgery, okay? <laughs> On the new reality show, Bridoplasty, brides to be compete for cosmetic procedures, Botox, Botox injections, I can't even say it, it's so great, and a grand prize of multiple plastic surgeries. And the other day in Hot Topics, we wondered about the doctor who agreed to be a well, part of this. Let's see what he has to say for himself. He's here. Please welcome Dr. Terry Dubrow. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming. I have to ask you one thing first, though. When the guy, uh, you know, the groom lifts the thing and says, I don't know who this woman is, what happens then? Yeah, that's <laughs> you know? a good question. I was concerned about that yeah. myself. But, you know, one of the reasons they chose me is because I do natural plastic surgery. And the goal on your wedding day is that's to look like... That's an oxymoron. Like... Natural plastic no, surgery. No. <laughs> you know what? If, if you're going to get married, you want to look your best on your wedding day, right. right? So if you can be a better version of yourself by pinning the ears back, taking a little bump <laughs> off the nose, making breasts, it's very... Very common. You know, one of the criticisms about the show is we're sending the wrong message. Okay. We're actually not sending any message. We're doing what's done very commonly across the board in the United is it, States. Is but it's common on I mean, the insecurities of brides. It doesn't. It doesn't. This is just turning a camera on what brides are doing all the time before they get married. If is this that common? It's called oh. premarital sex is what they're doing. You know, it, I mean, well, because in terms of being perfect, when when they do get voted off the mm -hmm. show, the host does say your wedding may your wedding will go on, but it may not be. Perfect. 
So is this really trying to capture that perfect wedding and brides well, are coming in asking for what? Boob job? No Well, the job. most common thing we get asked to do is breast augmentation to fill out your wedding dress. But you know, if your ears have always stuck out, I mean, when do you, when's the most important time for those pictures? Right? Who is paying attention to your ears when you get married? Certainly not your husband. That's why he asked you to marry him. You know, he didn't care about your ears when he put that ring on your finger. That, that's all theoretical too, right? And like maybe personal between the bride and the groom. What about the, what responsibility, say, do you have as a doctor? Because we watch the show, right? And so some of these women come in and they're probably no mm, bigger than the, this paper, sideways, okay? Right, right. They're saying, I want liposuction here, yeah. little removed here. What We saw what happened to Heidi Montag. Right. These women can get up to, what, 14 procedures? Where do you draw the line, and did you pull any back? Oh, absolutely. You know, I met these patients way before they went on the show. I cleared That's them fighting. psychologically mm -hmm. and medically. We created a wish list of non-invasive and invasive procedures that were appropriate and perfect for them. I wouldn't do all of those procedures, okay? They all wanted a very natural look. In fact, they asked me, you weren't the doctor that did that actress, are you? And I said, right. actually, I'm not. And they said, good, okay, I'm in, you know? Well, Dr. Well, Heidi looks I, I want to show... She look unnatural. Well, yes, she, looks she does. Altered. She, she looks, looks altered, but she had 10 procedures in one day. No, I agree. That's not the appropriate thing to do, right. and I wouldn't do that. You know, plastic surgery is a very personal choice, and you have to understand the risks and complications associated with it. It's not right for everyone. No, I want to show a clip of uh, one of the brides, one of the brides-to-be, uh, having a consultation with you. Let's look. Back yeah. here. Back here. Yeah, I feel like I'm part of an Indian tribe. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pock mark here, right, which is right mm -hmm. there. I think we do all of these procedures, you're gonna look pretty smoking hot, honestly. <laughs> Everybody wants that beautiful dream wedding. And even though Derek has told me over and over, he's like, no matter what, Lisa, he's like, you are beautiful. I wanna step out there and say, I feel good about me, and I'm happy. If she's okay, so, so happy, what's she crying about? Well, exactly. <laughs> but, it se but it seems like that's like what Elizabeth said of, of uh, you know, their insecurities that they have. Yeah. Right. You know, in this has, show. Every woman has them. No one's totally confident that's anymore. Concerning. I mean, are what are you trying to create? Like a perfect human being? No. I'm trying it's to do. Impossible. I'm not trying to create anything. These people come in just like they do to my practice every day, and, mm -hmm. and they want to make these changes. Mm -hmm. And you talk to them, make sure these are appropriate changes. They understand the risks, and if they're suitable candidates, then you go ahead and do it. But it's really a personal choice. For you, it may not be appropriate. For somebody else, it may be appropriate. What about the? Uh, I was reading under the American Society of Plastic Surgeons Code of Ethics, you're technically prohibited from giving procedures away as a prize in a contest, right? So how do you? If you yeah. not lose your license, there must be some sort of Right. There were no language. ethical issues here because these were my patients before. I met them before they were on the show. Mm -hmm. We cleared them medically, okay. and then we designed a list. So it's not like we're holding out a breast augmentation as a raffle right. or Everybody something like that. Everybody run to this, the yeah, fastest here it is, woman. Whether you're a candidate or not. Okay. They, they picked a procedure off a list. It could have been teeth whitening. It could have been acne yeah. care. You whatever know, they wanted. You know, back to Heidi for a second, Heidi Montag. Yeah. She says that she regrets having so many procedures, and she thinks her doctor is partially responsible. How do you respond to that. You know, I can't speak. I, I'm not her surgeon. But is and, her and doctor partially responsible? If, it, uh, if she had too many procedures and if she's really unhappy, there's no question the doctor is partially Ten responsible. Ten one day, I would say, yes, he is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, I wasn't there. I don't know. Okay. I wouldn't do that many procedures in one day, mm -hmm. okay? Right. Well, I'm, I certainly wouldn't do it on national television, right? So do it on I, the sneak. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do no, it No, but you seem, mean, you seem like you have a great sensibility. I mean, the show is fascinating, and I'm sure that there are many women who can relate to wanting the best on their day. So this is just one way they do it. We want to oh, thank yeah. Dr. Terry Dubrow for being brave and coming over. Bridal Plus D airs Sundays on E. Check your local listings. We'll be right back. It's a hard thing. But it's Did you have a good time? I had a great time. Will Thanks you for having me. Do it again. It's really Please. fun. Thank it was you. It's really it's cool. Oh, you. and by the way, uh, we say thank you to Condoleezza Rice. Uh, our audience is going home with her book, oh. Extraordinary Ordinary oh. People. Oh. Family. Take a take a little time to enjoy the do it. And